The recommended daily allowance, RDA, of vitamin C ranges between 30 and 95 milligrams daily, with 60 milligrams being recommended for adult men and women. Often, the proper dose of vitamin C in the treatment of an infectious disease may be anywhere from several hundredfold to several thousandfold times the amount in this minuscule RDA dose. The RDA serves to prevent only the development of the full-blown clinical picture of scurvy in otherwise clinically healthy people or to restore vitamin C blood levels in otherwise normal people to the levels deemed to be normal or acceptable. Indeed, in many people who have infectious diseases that metabolize unusually large amounts of vitamin C, keeping body stores of vitamin C depleted, the RDA for vitamin C will not even prevent many of the symptoms of scurvy from developing or restore the blood levels of vitamin C to the normal range. Evidence contained in this book will actually demonstrate that many people with such vitamin C depleting infectious diseases actually die from complications completely consistent with the symptoms of acute scurvy. For example, many people who eventually die from an infectious disease actually die from a bleeding complication. An acute and severe vitamin C deficiency is often the immediate underlying reason for either subtle bleeding or massive hemorrhage. Many of the numerous vitamin C research papers are also especially misleading in their conclusions since they persist in labeling the small amounts of vitamin C used in their studies as megadose. Even the amounts of vitamin C that are termed megadose in the literature often need to be increased a thousandfold or more to reach the necessary dosage actually needed to achieve the desired therapeutic effect. Because of this continued mislabeling in the literature, I will refer to the amounts of vitamin C that really should be used as optidoses, optimal doses. Although many of the optidoses recommended in this book will be substantially larger than most of the megadoses mentioned in the literature, the use of the term optidose may gradually allow doctors and patients alike to realize that the recommended dose is really the optimal dose that the body needs at that time. It is also important to realize that the optidose of vitamin C, even for a single patient, can vary widely, depending upon how sick the patient already is when therapy is initiated. Furthermore, one optidose is not necessarily appropriate for two patients with seemingly similar clinical situations, since one patient may have underlying factors consuming vitamin C much more rapidly than the other patient.